Hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you on Friday, August 18th. Goodness, the summer is almost gone. Oh, no. Um, anyway, quick video today. Not too much going on in the market. So something I've been feeling for a while would be relevant to share is the topic of really business school as an investment. If we have any uh, younger folks out there who are thinking about going back to business school, um, well, I did go to Wharton for an MBA uh, back in 2003 to 2005 and have some non-traditional thoughts on the whole process. So figured I would share that today. Good topic for a video because like much of our education system, I think it's sometimes unfortunate the way in our society, at least here in the U.S., all I remember from growing up was to get good grades, <laughs> go to college, get job, um, without really ever having much freedom or encouragement to say, hey, what is it that you really love to do? Or um, kind of more just reminds me of the, the Pink Floyd's Another Brick in the Wall, where it's just, uh, you know, everyone's being sent, which we find out later might not have been so bad if, we weren't reading Rothschild's textbooks, versions of history in grade school. A lot of the stuff we find out now is is propaganda, not exactly the way it went down. <clears throat> For example, one of my favorites is how in our in the American textbooks, it's called the Mexican-American War. And I remember hearing how in Mexico, if you read their textbook, it's called the American Invasion. So certainly starts with grade school then college at this point which wow if i had a a child who is a teenager right now i would i would not well probably i wouldn't have sent them to a public school but certainly wouldn't encourage them to go to a public college or private or public college at this point um the prices are you know, it's, it's like you need a mortgage to go through one of these things. And in the end, it comes down to really what is the value you're getting. So we'll leave aside the, uh, the undergrad for the moment, which I guess you could extrapolate. The thoughts will be a lot similar. But in terms of the graduate business school and the MBA programs, first of all, it depends what is it that you want to get out of the experience. I, at the time, was working, uh, I was still at my first job out of undergrad with Moody's, the bond rating agency, and uh, <laughs> let's just say it wasn't, it wasn't the hot spot in town. You didn't go out on Friday night and girls were like, wow, let's, <laughs> let's find the rating agency guy. So that didn't happen. Um, and I was, uh, you know, for me, it was the first job that Lee's felt started in the financial industry, although I always thought, you know, part of what drew me to finance, I remember very early on taking a field trip, I grew up in New Jersey, don't laugh. <laughs> uh, so I remember taking a field trip to, I think it was one of the trading floors that was in the World Trade Center site. I, I don't remember which exchange that was, but I remember seeing that seeing trading places and something about the energy and the excitement and similar to what I think people like about poker where you can study your area or think about what you think is going to happen and then you know I guess uh, you know you could think of trading as a legalized form of gambling Cer certainly that's what it's turned into at this point so from Moody's thinking all right you know, you want to get a better job, make more money, uh, business school seemed like a good enough way to go. To be honest, I didn't really put a ton of thought into it. Um, but I remember asking a couple of the older folks at, at Moody's where I worked, and basically the consensus I got was don't really expect that you're going to get enlightenment in life. But if you want to get a job where you might you have more options, you get to hopefully make more money, do what you like. Um, to that standpoint, it can be helpful. And in that sense, it was because uh, left Moody's, went down to Philly, had an internship on Merrill Lynch's trading floor. 
and then went on to work for an equity options trading shop, which uh, there were parts of that that I really liked, the strategy and the trading element I loved. Um, again, some of the way things work out in some of these bigger corporate cultures uh, over time became less my thing. So anyway, back to the business school. If that's your simple goal, um, that can be one way to go. And in fact, my impression was that pretty much everyone was there for that same reason. So it served almost as a do-over card of sorts. Now, when we get to the actual stuff that they were teaching there, again, I can only speak from my experience. A lot of people loved it. A lot of people feel differently. Um... And I want to say this in the right way um, because, again, we get this all at our own speed. But if you're in that mindset where you still follow the Wall Street logic, buying treasuries, trusting in the Fed, all that sort of stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. I guess say trusting in the Fed and it gets my throat <laughs> messed up. Um yeah, you know, then it, uh, many of the people that fit that profile, and I'm not trying to put that down by any means. Uh, who knows? I'm again, I'm the, the wild conspiracy theorist, so maybe I'm the crazy one, and they've got the right idea. But I found that most of those folks did like the experience. Um, again, there was just uh, something about it that didn't feel right. Where uh, early on, I sort of mentally checked out it was nice they did have a pass fail system there which is great so <clears throat> you know there were there was certainly a segment of the people there that were focused on hey i'm gonna focus my time on the interviews getting the job i want going to the recruiting stuff which certainly was where i fit in uh, i would do what i needed to do in the classwork and then most of the time was trying to learn about trading figuring out how to get a job going out to trading floors uh man i remember uh, there were 12 main trading banks at the time which i thought was the apex of career success <laughs> how little we knew um so again going a lot of different floors and from that standpoint if you want to go work at goldman or jp morgan which Certainly some of the things that I've heard and learned since then, I wouldn't do that now and wouldn't necessarily advise someone that uh, at least is asking my opinion of places to work um, without getting too far off track. I find that a lot of these banks get involved, even beyond the stuff that we grew up reading about, the bubbles and all that, but just some not so nice stuff, so... <clears throat> Again, I didn't know this back then. And But if you want access to McKinsey or the big consulting shops, certainly, you know, the, the MBA can serve as kind of a way to get your foot in the door, get started. In hindsight, I would say if there's a job you really want, there's probably uh, easier ways to do that. I mean, than spending a hundred grand in two, two years of your life. I'm sure it's a lot more than a hundred grand now. I can't even imagine. I, I hear some of the the college amounts, and they're just stunning. Um, so I mean, I think there are better ways to go. Unfortunately, I think it's one of those things where we've been conditioned that if you don't have this college degree or if you don't have the MBA, then you're just not worthwhile. Which I don't think is the case. Um, geez, take that year or two and. Just start contacting people, meeting people, networking. Um, you can save yourself a lot of money. In fact, give me a hundred grand. I'll introduce you to, <laughs> to some guys at some banks. And um, although perhaps maybe what really stands out about a decade, now well, more than a decade later, is thing is when I think about the actual content that they teach there. Again, I have, uh, I remember there were people who went for entrepreneurial stuff, and that may be a completely different experience. I can't comment on that as much. But I guess the story I'll give you on this one is I remember uh, the main guy that everyone, if you wanted to go into trading or anything market related, they said you have to take Jeremy Siegel's class. 
Now, if you ever watch CNBC or or follow uh, some of the various voices out there, various voices out there, uh, Siegel is a somewhat well-known figure. Uh, his main book, Stocks for the Long Run, um, basically sounds like a Federal Reserve manual, which oddly enough, I do remember it. One of his after hours, there couldn't have been more than four or five of us in the room. And this was back, uh, I think his class I took my second semester. So let's say the spring, of, it must have been the spring of 2004. And he actually told us at one point that he was being considered as a successor to Greenspan, which at the time was uh, still, you know, in terms of the things we talk about today and the Fed, it was, I had no idea about any of that, barely even knew what the Fed did back then. Although when you think about Siegel, who sounds exactly like Bernanke or Yellen or any of these other guys that, hey, when anything happens, just print money, that's the magic balm. <clears throat> yeah, he actually would have fit in great. But the more so the point being that, again, here it is, supposedly one of our top business schools, and what do you go there, and then they're teaching the same money printing stuff that you see throughout Wall Street. I remember uh, after the housing crisis hit, there's this, you can, and you can still Google it and find it. Uh, the, I believe, uh, I think he's one of the main guys up at Harvard. Name is Greg Manq. I think it's M-A-N-K-I-W, something like that. But if you Google Greg Manq or Cow or however you say it, sorry, Greg, um, and, and, and negative interest rates... <clears throat> It's interesting because this was even before the banks started doing negative interest rates. So back in 2009, Greg was saying, hey, the problem is we just had this bubble collapse and people aren't spending enough money. We got to get them to go deeper into debt. So how do we do that? Well, let's give them a negative interest rate. So if you just leave your hundred bucks in the bank, you're going to get 98. So if we give them a negative interest rate, this will encourage them to go out and borrow and spend more which <clears throat> certainly if you subscribe to Wall Street, lo Wall Street logic, it's uh, obviously that's the way it's done there. If you subscribe to regular people logic, I would argue that that's complete insanity. Although what with a little perspective and time I see now is how You know, when I, when, when I started seeing things differently after the bubble collapsed, it was clearly the outsider on the trading floor. I was the gold conspiracy guy. I remember the last Christmas party my this one guy I was friends with. He was like, hey, there's the doom and gloom gold guy. And, you know, I get it. It wasn't fitting in with that Wall Street mentality. Although now looking back on it, I see it a bit differently where, You know, these guys just, the guys I was working with, it was almost like you could see in their eyes where it was like, uh, this kid might be right, but, you know, the wife is happy, got the two cars, we're making the house payments, I'm just going to hope for the best and stick my head in the sand. And <clears throat> again, not to belittle it, but that's literally, uh, well, maybe not literally, I guess it's not <laughs> figuratively and close to literally. I mean, that was really the reaction that I got. And part of that, I think, is the sense in which, you know, a lot of these jobs, again, I wasn't a higher level banker, I was just a guy trading options on the New York Stock Exchange. But <clears throat> when I think about my brief experience with Merrill Lynch, and, you know, just the people I've met and heard them share their experiences, it's almost like you have to have a certain mindset to climb that ladder of which whether this was intentionally set up this way or just developed, you know, people go through Jeremy Siegel's class. They go through the guy's class at Harvard and, and are forced to develop that mindset in the same way that if you go to medical school, maybe there's a natural cure that's better, but if you want your degree, if you want to get your residency or go to the next steps, 
you're giving the answer that their textbook says, not necessarily what's right. <clears throat> and especially having studied a lot of psychology and conditioning and understanding the way the mind works since then, I mean, there's a lot of pressure. People are paying a lot of money. It's very competitive in these business schools. There's these, the jobs that everybody wants and everyone's competing for. So I didn't, I, I wasn't mature enough or knowledgeable enough to grasp it all back then. Uh, you know, something about it just never, it didn't, it didn't feel like my party. In fact, uh, I skipped as many of my classes as I could the second year and played online poker and practiced the guitar, which hindsight were good, uh, good skills to have. Um, but again, it's, it's just, it's one of those things where there's the established way, which, and I've seen the similarities, whether it's the money printing or the pharmaceutical companies or the DSM-4 that says if someone has this symptom, zap them with that drug or, or the way we see things go with the military where a lot of it is, we're finding out is not as we were told, um, that was really my takeaway from business school where looking back on it now, it seemed like almost if you want to, I mean, if you wanted to be a federal reserve board member or a high level banker, you know, you have to follow that Keynesian and by Keynesian, uh, <clears throat> I think many of you are familiar with Alan Maynard Keynes, but really Keynesian economics is that belief that trust in the fed, let, the government manage everything and when things aren't well, just print more cash and that's somehow going to make it better. Which, if that sounds kind of silly, <laughs> of course it is, of course it is. But that's what they teach in business school, at least at Wharton for the uh, financial part. And again, I'm not trying to give uh, Siegel or Greg from Harvard a, a hard time, although... I don't know. I mean, it, it, it is what it is. And at least if you've been thinking about going to business school or maybe you know someone who's going, again, there are all sorts of different reasons to go. I would say that I've learned exponentially more from YouTube or buying individual online programs where, hey, if you want great investors, go watch Doug Casey, go listen to Rick Rule, come to Arcadia Economics. I mean, there's great people who are speaking a lot of them design courses to share their knowledge so <clears throat> there are ways if the goal is to become educated and productive and understand what's going on in my opinion there are better ways to do this by all means uh there's always the link below these videos to the to my website and uh if you have any questions about that you're always welcome to write in and uh Perhaps I can help steer you in a less expensive and more effective direction. Again, everybody's different, but just sharing what I my experiences were from college and then in the last five years of leaving Wall Street, going to a lot of marketing seminars, just seeing how, and maybe we didn't have the internet developed the way it was back then, but when you can pick any world's expert, go to YouTube and see that person speak for hours. Often they'll say on their, their website, hey, for 100 or 200 bucks, here's how you do X. This isn't just finance. Uh, and personally, I, well, especially when you look at the student loan bubble that's backing all this stuff that could put the mortgage bubble to shame. I think it's on borrowed time. And in either case, just wanted to introduce that there are other ways to do things. Uh, I know my views of the business school process are a little non-traditional, yet things are changing in the world. Some are going to be different than we expect, and in either case, hopefully this was helpful. So leave any questions below. Go out, have a great weekend, and we will see you again on Monday. Bye.